I'm presenting um, a project that is basically that's based in the UK um, and a bit more of the macro level. Um, we are working basically with peace agreements and on peace processes um, funded by the British Foreign Ministry. Uh, the project is going on now for more than eight years and started actually with a, a collection of peace agreements. Um, and we wanted to make these peace agreements not just available in a repository, but also to be more usable by people negotiating peace and mediating in, 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 in peace negotiations around the planet from like the international level also down to basically local peace agreements, community negotiations. So the outcome of this was then that um, we at one point realized that the database of these agreements is just not enough to make this user friendly, so to speak. Um, so the project as such started to work on, on what we call a peace agreement trackers and peace process trackers, PAX tracker as we call it. Um, this is also then consequences for the project as such because we, we started to change from a very kind of social science, political science, law heavy project to, to embark into, into, for us, very foreign territories like data analysis, data visualization, these kinds of things, with the idea to make these, these, this data better available. Just to, to showcase like the, the themes of our program, Peace Processes Fragmentation, we just use peace tech really, we see it as a tool to approach all these problems, to make these problems perhaps also visible in a different kind of way. Um, this, is, this is basically the main thing where we are looking into the technology. We can analyze more data um, and can perhaps show through this, 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 this analysis of, of more data in a different kind of way how things look like and if there's differences in, in terms of what we do regularly in, in, in analysis. So who, who are actually our, our target um, audiences? And here it becomes a bit challenging because our target audiences are quite diverse. Um, we work, of course, basically for, for international and national policy, uh, which means people sitting in foreign ministries, sitting in mediation units, or, or, or kind of in, in national ministries, to use this for, for policy decision making. But we also uh, use this for basically research communities and then also local communities to, to work with, with this. And this makes a huge difference also in, in terms of what has been said in the first plenary in the interfaces. Because what is very easy for people sitting in London in front of a computer in terms of connectivity, in terms of like what you can visualize on, 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 on kind of a big screen, becomes very different if you are um, in, in like a country where I work with a lot, South Sudan, in, in somewhere basically in a remote area where you have actually no real internet access and everything basically works on mobile phones. Um, bandwidth becomes a huge issue. So there's, there's technological issues in, in access to technologies that are, are kind of challenging and where we have learned, had to have learned quite a lot because the database was basically always an online only element and all these, all these steps of analysis take quite a lot of bandwidth off, which just wouldn't in the beginning work in different kind of contexts. Um, so there we, we had to, to work quite a lot. Um, the idea is for us to bring behind peace agreements a lot of, of a, a broad variety of data um, to become something like a meta platform. Um, these trackers are going to be, to be launched in the beginning of 2024, so the, 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 the previews I'm going to show you is how, how it will look like. Um, this is just for the, for, the, for the peace agreements database when we go one further. Um, you see, basically, this is, this is the first simple steps how we started to make analysis. It's just making peace agreements um, and peace negotiations visual, vis visible uh, through visualization techniques. You see different agreement types and you get a sense where is actually where the things are, are happening on a global scale. Um, the tracker now um, brings key components, different key components together. It's kind of a timeline of change which we can do with the peace agreements. Um, we, we can also read in the agreements what is actually negotiating, what has been negotiated, what has happened in these agreements. Um, we can now, and we, we embark more on this, to analyze who is actually negotiating, who is signing, who is mediating in different kind of contexts. And then now, um, and this is the final step of, the, of this tracker, we bring in a lot of, of different contextual indicators from a variety of data sources that we are able to basically update live. So this is a constant kind of live update situation. Um, 
this is now a, a snake how it, how it might look like so this will be the the entry platforms you can you can do it like in a global comparison across all peace processes or you can basically then go to the particular countries where most of the peace processes are happening um, see this is this is for example what we have for Ukraine how it will look like and here you see that you have basically the, the we both elements of peace agreements when did agreements happen what has been negotiated in these this is what the process overview does basically telling us what are the main topics how are they addressed um, we see which actors are kind of related to 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 which types of agreements and then we see we use different data for that for a conflict mapping but also then the implementation data which is um, down at the at the, the left hand side here yeah, this would be the example in South Sudan. We, we have different um, data sources for, for different countries available. Um, some of them produced by ourselves, some of them the metadata available from, from, from other sources. In South Sudan, for instance, we use um, two particular elements that are not yet there in other countries, which are kind of testing. We run a public perception of peace survey, basically annually, where we can supplement the, the data we have from other sources with, with data we ourselves generate and find out. We ask people basically, do they feel safe? How they trust the process? How is the process going? And we can link this data then with, with the available metadata. And we have also, when you just go back for a second, the, the, the implementation report, um, which uses um, all these available reports in, 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 in settings, which are never really read because you have so many of them. You have this, this, this. You have, for instance, like the implementation reports of the agreement. You have elements such as the ceasefire monitoring reports, and you have lots of project reports that you get, for instance, over the the UN Multi Donor Trust Fund website. These informations, and this is something we discovered. This is basically so much that nobody reads them. Not even the people in the projects themselves. Like even when the people take over these positions, this is all dead paper. And with these um, basically tools we have, we try to analyze this, these all these available reports to see what has actually happened in implementation. What were the main issues? Where is nothing moving? Where is something moving? And to an extent, we can we can show this. Um, I think. So you see, basically, these are just examples of, of how, how it looks like when we go into the timeline. You see, basically, what are the main events and where are peace agreements located across these events? Because it's meant to just give a showcase. This is basically in, in now in, in a bigger form, like a, the, the global overview of what are the main topics. One of the interesting things when you analyze agreements, that the most common topic in peace agreements is actually a, a, a mentioning of human rights, which you wouldn't necessarily think. This is also true but in ceasefires, by the way. It's often general references. But what you can with this tool then is to dig down and to see actually how these references look like. And also how elements like security sector reform, disarmament, all these, these elements that are usually power sharing, that are usually part of these agreements, how have they been handled in, in, in these processes? Yep. The implementation, this is the implementation indicators. When you go one further, then we see how it looks like. This is basically the data sources that we use, and it's possible for us to, to use them basically in a live update setting, because this is all basically open source data that is available, as will be ours. So we are able to basically do this, do this uh, in, a, in a live kind of way. Um, this is the indicators we are looking for, and this is then how it will look like. Before. So this is basically just one of the impact indicators where we use VDEM, um, USCD data. This is basically on the, on the, on the a broad overview, how agreements um, um, link up with um, broader indicators of how a process is doing. I think, like to to wrap up, I mean, there's two two elements that we that we learn in this process. The first thing is what I've said before with the interfaces. Of the, how can this be of use to different kind of audiences? We do a lot of testing with with um, basically foreign ministries, with the UN, but also with with communities on the ground. We had just somebody in South Sudan for quite some weeks to see how this is kind of flying, how people are using this, and and uh, indeed, like um, it's it's something. How broad can the data be? How you deal with bandwidth? How can this make can this be made accessible in a very kind of short form? These are the main challenges. And I think the second element of this is going, I'm going to close is also what does this data really do? Is it telling us a different story to what we see um, conventionally? I think in some 
some elements we have been successful. We, we basically have been able to show that not a single piece process goes by the books. Um, and visually, you can show this in a very kind of nice way. But we have still, I think, a, a broad way to go. And I think it has to be in use for a while in order for more, more of these stories to develop. With that, thanks so much. Thank you. Sorry, the clicker didn't go on yet.